This practical print, two hours and 11 minutes, 32 minutes. Two and a half times the cost, four times the speed. The new Creality K1. Let's talk about it on today's Film It Friday. This video is sponsored by Creality3dofficial.com by ComGrow. This video is also brought to you by my Patreon supporters. This is the Creality K1. It's a high speed printer, high temperature printer, completely enclosed, fully assembled, take it out of the box and pretty much start printing. And I gotta tell you, it's awesome. I'm really happy with the results I'm getting. Now my first printer from ComGrow, they gave me this one for the channel, but they also shipped me one prior to this. This is my second one. The first one they shipped in a cardboard box. And this front door is glass. So it got hit, it broke into a million pieces. So when I took it out of the box, it was a mess. Just glass everywhere. So I wasn't too happy about that, but I got lucky because of that, because this is actually a newer unit which has the improved extruder. Those early units had a bad extruder. So some of the YouTube videos out there where people say they're getting under extrusion, that's gone, that's fixed. In fact, I got another machine directly from Creality for me to play with, and it's got the latest features, including the new extruder. So I got two machines, and they're both printing beautifully. I've had no issues with either one. The units I received after that were in a cardboard box and then inside a wood box. To set this up, it's really disassembly, not assembly. There's three screws that hold the bed down tight for shipping. So you gotta take those three screws out and then you can power it up and run the self-test. And it'll go through everything and tell you that it's ready. You also have to put the top on if you want to, it snaps in place. You also have to connect the touchscreen display and then snap it into place. And other than that, you're ready to start printing. When you go through that startup, you have the option of using the Wi-Fi that this is capable of and connect it up to the Creality Cloud. Now, I'm a, not a big fan of the Creality Cloud. This machine, I set it up without internet connection. So I could just print right from the USB drive that comes with it. Now, there is no camera in this, but there is an option to add a camera. In fact, they've got a kit that's coming out to give you that latest extruder and the camera and I think a spool of filament for like $2 for anyone that got one of those early units. So that just came out as I was making this video, so I don't know all the details, but check into that if you're interested. The build plate that comes with it is a flexible metal plate. It's called an A-plate, and it says, please apply glue before print. So glue stick, but don't use the glue stick that comes with it because a lot of people have had problems with that. Get Avery glue stick or something similar. This is a Staples clone of it. That's the stuff I recommend. I've used glue stick for years. You mainly want to put it on here so it don't stick too good. I've printed on this without the glue stick. Worked just fine. Now build size, it's the same size as an under three. Same size bed. 220 by 220 and 250 tall. That's your build area. Now they are coming out with a K1 Max, which is 300 by 300 by 300, I believe. It's going to be a little more money but it looks exactly the same, just bigger. A lot of people are looking to get that so they can print helmets. But I gotta tell you, this size right here is the same size under three, and I'm not even using my under threes anymore. I've been printing everything on this because it's so damn fast. The USB drive that comes with it has some sample files, including this cat, this flexible cat. Came right off the bed like this, loose, no issues. It also has this high speed print, it's vase mode, and it prints at the max 600 millimeters per second. So this thing just flying around. Printed it beautifully, the sides are smooth. Really impressed how well this printed. And as far as noise or shaking, it comes with these extra rubber feet. It has rubber feet in the bottom, but it's got these extra cups you can put it on, and it definitely dampens the sound and makes it quieter. This thing is not nearly as quiet as an Ender 3. Now that was actually filmed with the door open. With the door closed, it's a little bit quieter. Now I'm not gonna claim this is a quiet machine, but I will tell you it's a little bit quieter than my Bamboo Lab X1C. That thing rocks and bangs all over the place. And I've seen other people confirm with sound tests that this is slightly quieter than the Bamboo Lab X1C. Included in their sample files is a 17 minute Benchy. Now they also include a small sample of their Hyper PLA, which is supposed to, I guess, melt quicker. And that's what I printed this with. So 17 minute Benchy, it's not perfect, but there's no line across the hall. And it looks 
really good. It's not perfect, but it's really good, especially for a 17 minute Benchy. Now to use the K1, the slicer they recommend is Creality Print, which is based on Cura, but they've reworked it. And they also got K1 profiles. They've got profiles for various filaments. So it's much easier to get started. Now I'm not saying it's the best profiles, I think I can improve on them and I'm working on it. Plus there's other slicers like Orca Slicer and maybe Prusa Slicer. And I don't know how much Cura is going to work with it, but people are trying to develop profiles for this thing. So I think it's going to get better in the future. But right now I'm just using Creality Print. Now with Creality Print profiles, I'm getting pretty good prints. But what was really interesting is when I tried a Chep Cube. This is a small print. With my Cure Profiles, a 0.2 layer height, on an Ender 3, it would take about 34 minutes to get this quality. On this guy, it was like 23 or 25 minutes in Creality Print. But what I found was, in their cooling section, their minimum layer time was set to 8 seconds, way too long for a small print. I reduced that down to 1 second, and I got this down to 7 minutes. A 7 minute Chep Cube at the same quality as my profiles are giving me on an Ender 3. Now it really got interesting when I tried to print a practical print. This is actually a tool for electronics that I found in Thingiverse and I modified it in Tinkercad. So I wanted to print it multiple times to make sure I got it right. Well, the first time I printed it, it didn't work. I had to print it over and over again. So this is gonna take a lot of time. Well, what it does is it has different slots for the number of pins. So you slide the header in, this is a six slot. So when I just break this off, it's going to give me exactly six pins. It's gonna break off to exactly six pins. Very handy tool. Now, if I was to print this in Cura on an Ender 3 at a decent quality, a 0.2 layer height, it would take me two hours and 11 minutes. But because of the settings and a reduced minimum layer time, I was able to print this with very good quality, a smooth bottom, not warped, in 32 minutes on here. And I had to print a bunch of them because I screwed up some settings in Tinkercad. So I ended up printing a whole bunch of them. It was so much easier to do this because it only took 32 minutes to print it than in two hours to find out my errors. This is where I started to say, I don't know if I'm gonna use an Ender 3 anymore because this thing prints so fast and so good that I was able to produce this tool in 32 minutes. The other thing I found was accuracy. I actually designed this tool for breaking off headers where you slide the header in and there's actually a slide that goes on top of this so you can adjust the length and it's got to fit right. There's actually grooves in here that it snaps into. So this little piece had to be accurate to fit this. This little piece printed on here, perfectly accurate. And I did this in like 35 minutes. Printed them together. 35 minutes. This was a design from scratch that I did on Tinkercad. I, I want to improve things, but the whole idea is that instead of having these different slots, I can just slide it to whatever pin count I want, break them off over and over again, slide it to the next one over and over again. But what I was impressed with was a small print was so accurate, first time, fit over, and works great. Snaps into the slots, works great. Bamboo Lab just released the P1S. It's their fully enclosed printer to compete with the K1 at $699, but it doesn't have a touch screen, but it does have other features. They do offer the P1P and recently reduced the price to $599 to compete with the K1. The K1 has now been reduced to $539. I don't know if this is a sale or this is gonna be permanent. And with that extra $2 kit that they're offering to give you the camera and everything, the price wars are on and I'm loving it. Now I know I'll see people commenting that they love their Bamboo Labs printers, the P1P or the X1C. I got an X1C with the AMS system. I've had some issues getting mine working properly, but now it is and it prints really good. But I also love this printer and I don't love the closed source of the Bamboo Lab printers, but for some people that doesn't bother them. They love that. This one, I like that it's closer to open source. They've done some things with Clipper that the true Clipper knowledgeable people know needs to be fixed and I've talked to Creality about it and they said they're going to make it more open source in the future. I hope they follow through on that but this is a lot closer to open source. The fact I can use a volcano nozzle in this thing. You can replace the nozzle. You can use those CHT longer nozzles in this thing. So that is really nice versus having to buy a separate nozzle like the Bamboo Labs machines have you do. But either way this is a great direction for 3D printing and I hope this becomes the open source without having, you can go Voron, you know, and build your own, which is really fast and really good. But this gets people for close to $500.
into high speed, good quality printing out of the box. I think this was a great step that Creality did and I'm enjoying the heck out of it. So let me know what your thoughts are on all this in the comments below. If you're looking at getting a K1, check out Creality3DOfficial.com by ComGrow. They have that $539 price. They're a great supporter of the channel, so check them out. Creality3DOfficial.com by ComGrow. If you like what I'm doing here, maybe check out some of the other videos popping up. If you want to help support the channel, Patreon is one way, or a membership at Things.com. And if nothing else, click on that Filament Friday logo and subscribe. I'll see you next time right here at Filament Friday.